everybody, Michael here. Welcome back to Wrestling Talk number two. Now, welcome back to, as promised, I was going to do once a month to talk about the upcoming pay-per-views, predictions, and reactions to the show. Uh, today, I am joined by my best friend and possibly one of the greatest guys I could ever talk to with wrestling, Gangrene David. So, David, say hello. What's up, man? Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on. Now, David, this has been one of the most, if not the most crucial and painful recordings of a show that i have ever done because guys this is the 60th take we have tried to film this many times and every time we try to film it it either doesn't record it either blanks the footage out or worst of all doesn't record so thankfully we are using the uh voice memo and this is working perfectly so no issue, nothing. So, David, let's get this video started. Now, before we do start, I just want to give the quick shout out to my man, David. Guys, if you're everybody out there watching that's a Jets fan or a football fan, I'm telling you right now, go over to my brother's channel, give him a subscribe. Yes, he is my brother. He is a great person. So, I'm telling you, go over, give him a subscribe. You will not regret subscribing. He talks about NFL, he does call ins. He is the most interactive, passionate football fan that I know. And he is personally one of the greatest Jet fans that I could even know. And I'm saying this from personal experience. So head over to his channel, hit the subscribe button. You will not regret it. Well, thank you for the kind words. Um, obviously, I have a lot of blocks coming up for the fall season. Um, I have, obviously, my NXT TakeOver and SummerSlam vlog. I will be at both of those events mm. um, next week. And also, I'm having big things come for my channel. While I'm trying to get special guests on for videos and you know, it's a lot of fun, so stay tuned. And big things to come. And uh, we're we're gonna we're trying to make a part two of our wrestling video. Yep, a part two. That's exactly what we're trying to do. So, uh, many things to come. We'll see when we can get them done before the summer's over. But let's get this video started, because obviously we're wasting time, and we want to make sure everything is done in a neatly fashion. So, with that said, let's start the video with nxt takeover now david you have a lot to say about nxt takeover you know more than i do about this so i'm gonna let you talk about it what the hell is going on with this main event and what is your stance on this all right well obviously this main event um so originally it was supposed to be a triple threat match between alistair black johnny gargano and tomaso champa for the nxt championship and a lot of fans wanted to see that match, and it was the first time, probably, in NXT history we would have been, been able to see that title defended in a triple threat. However, Aleister Black sadly suffered a groin injury and will be out for about six weeks. And I, w I do wish Aleister Black a speedy recovery. But, however, now we're going into this match with Johnny Gargano and, and Tommaso Ciampa, part three. This time in a last man standing match. Um, am I upset about this match? No. Am I happy about this match? Not. No, I'm not too stoked. But this is a match where you could get excited about because it's a great rivalry, and a lot. And now it is going into the next stage with the title, um, and you obviously have another stipulation added to it after those two went off street fights and unsanctioned matches so now you have this main event where it is going to be a great match but it isn't the match you really wanted to see but it's not like wwe had a choice but however i do give a lot of credit to triple h over there in nxt for at least trying to suffice it into a storyline and trying to make it as efficient as we could so I wish Alistair Black nothing but a speedy recovery. It absolutely blows that we're not going to be able to see this triple threat match in Brooklyn. But however, we are getting we are getting a good match whatsoever for the NXT Championship in a last man standing match. Those two are going to go at it, and it's going to be a continuation to a great story. Yep, and with that said, it's time to give the NXT TakeOver 4 Brooklyn prediction. So kicking it off. I'm going to list the five matches, and we're going to go one by one. So starting off with the main event, right off the bat, Tomasa Ciampa versus Johnny Gargano. Now, David, I'm going to go out on a limb for a prediction here. I'm going to tell you, I mean, obviously, we've said this before, but 
In this case, I'm going with Tomasa Champa for the reason that he is an awesome heel, if not one of the best heels that I've seen in a long time, but also because I think he was just given the title. So for him to lose it this fast, I don't see that really being a possibility. However, I do know the rivalry with Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, and obviously they're, I think they're split one apiece. So Johnny Gargano coming out on top would definitely be the better alternative. However, you can make the argument that this match has been done twice already. What's the difference if we do it a third time? Well, now you have a championship title in the mix, so maybe they put on a better show. And to me, I'm definitely looking forward to it, but I'm going with Tommaso Ciampa. Yeah, well, I don't blame you. Um, with Johnny Gargano, obviously, um, I think really, I think really he's one of, I think it's really, um, it's kind of like Daniel Bryan in a sense. Um, where you have Daniel Bryan facing all the odds, and then Daniel Bryan wins the title WrestleMania. He wins the big one. This is kind of what they're doing with Johnny Gargano in the way. They want to get him on that quest to win the big title. Because, obviously, you look at him with... He obviously had a great run with Tommaso Ciampa as a tag team. DIY. And then DIY broke up, obviously, at NXT TakeOver Chicago in 2017. Because Tommaso Ciampa... Um, uh, they wanted to give him a heel turn and he obviously took time off because he tore the ACL in that tag team ladder match against the Office of Pain so obviously now Johnny Gargano would now transition into a singles career which personally I enjoyed seeing overall because he got into he obviously became a single he obviously went to a singles career and you had him going up against Pete Dunne for the United Kingdom Championship. So obviously, more or less, he had a rivalry with Andrade Cien Almas at NXT. And it was fantastic. And those two, especially at NXT TakeOver Philadelphia, put on a phenomenal match. And then you obviously had that... You obviously had that... You obviously also started that storyline with him and Tommaso Ciampa when Tommaso Ciampa returned to TakeOver Philadelphia, coming off that ACL... MCL shoulder injury. He had a lot of injuries at the time, and it took a month to recover. So, you then obviously had Johnny Gargano competing for the NXT Championship again, and then this time Tommaso Ciampa obviously interfered again. You're obviously that you're obviously having Johnny Gargano trying to fight for that NXT Championship, but continuously coming up short. Whether it's due to Zelina Vega, you know, helping Cien almost win, or whether it's Tommaso Ciampa. Come interfering in the match and not to mention Johnny Gargano and Aleister Black who were supposed to have an NXT title match and trust me God I hope those two have a five star match at NXT TakeOver because that is my dream match right there and the, they were he was supposed to have an NXT title match against Aleister Black at a, ta at a taping and then Tommaso Ciampa returned after a couple of weeks on the shelf and he he interfered in the, he interfered and put Gargano out of and took Gargano out of the equation so now you're continuing to build up this storyline, and now you have two former best friends who were once rival, who are now rivals, and you now have the title in the mix. A guy, here's how it goes. Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa, the guy who has cost Gargano the NXT title, who pretty much, quote-unquote, broke his heart at NXT TakeOver Chicago with the breakup of DIY, which meant a lot to him. Who, and now this is a guy who wants the NXT championship. This is his dream, which is why I'm using the Daniel Bryan analogy. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, with the championship on the line, Johnny Gargano finally makes his dream come true. And he, and he becomes the last man standing and wins the NXT championship. And he, and he finally gets his NXT title run as he deserves. Mm -hmm. I hear you. I think, honestly, that's a very valid point, and I definitely like that you added in the Daniel Bryan analogy, because that does make a lot of sense. I mean, obviously, they tried to recreate that whole scenario with Roman Reigns, but we'll get to that later. But next up, let's start off with the women's championship match. You've got um, Sane versus uh, Baszler. So let me know, David, who do you think? I'm going to have to give this one to Shayna Baszler, because I think the only reason why they're having this match for the NXT Women's Championship is because Kyrie Sane beat Shayna Baszler in the Mayon Classic Finals. So they want to push her as the woman who has the best shot 
at beating Shayna Baszler. But as of now, I think it looks like Baszler will hold on to that title, mainly because then um, there, Shayna Baszler is now getting pushed on NXT as the top w- woman in NXT, and I think they're gonna they're gonna probably have her hold on to that belt for a while. And whether it's Candice LeRae dethroning her, or whether it's um, or whether it's any other woman on the NXT roster, whether it's Nikki Cross, which obviously that's not going to happen. Whether it's, I feel like it's going to be Ken Slaray who eventually dethrones her, because I think I think he should, I think there could be a potential power couple with her and Johnny Gargano there. But you know, as of right now in this match per se, you know, because they're building up the character for Kyrie Sane to be the best woman to beat her, Shayna Baszler walks out with the champ with the title. All right. So next up, Adam Cole versus Ricochet for the North American Championship. Uh, for this one, I'm going to give this edge to... Um, I Originally, I picked Adam Cole, but the more I thought about it and the more I saw how this guy, like, he works hard, I think Ricochet has a better shot for winning it, but I can see the Undisputed Era coming out and making Cole win. But the reason I say Ricochet is because this guy has a lot of charisma, if that makes any sense. He definitely has the push, the drive, and honestly, he's great. So, for that, I'm going to go with Ricochet. And also, the NXT North American Championship, in my opinion, it's just kind of like a throwaway title. I don't know why they made it. I don't know why it even exists. I mean, I understand the UK Championship because that was in a tournament. And that's specifically made for the UK division. But the North American Championship, we already have a championship in America. The NXT Championship. But with that said, it doesn't matter. I'm still going to go with Ricochet. Well, first of all, I actually disagree with that point. I think, I think the reason why they're having the North American Championship is because there, there's obviously only a certain amount of superstars in the NXT roster that can go for the NXT Championship, and they obviously want to have got they want to have Mick Carter's too, obviously like Ricochet and the Velveteen Dream and Cassius Ono. They obviously play a big part on the NXT roster too. This is why they, the Intercontinental Championship and the United States Championship exist. Because they want to, they want to give mid, they want to give mid Carters a chance to hold the title, and that's what they're doing with the North American Championship. I think they, I think they cut back on, um, on titles in NXT because the NXT Championship is the top prize in NXT. So what better way to really sort of get the mid Carters noticed more, especially guys who are emerging like Adam Cole the Ricochet, and Velveteen Dream, and even EC3 with the North American Championship. And as soon as that title was released, it was put in a ladder match at NXT TakeOver New Orleans, and that match had to have been one of the greatest matches I've seen in NXT history. All six guys in that match, Killian Dane, Lars Sullivan, Velveteen Dream, Ricochet, Adam Cole, and EC3, they all put it on the line just for that title. And it clearly shows that the Mick, that obviously even Mick Carters also have something to prove. But, but I'm not the, like I'm not disputing that. I'm saying yeah, this title is definitely a title of the fight over. I'm disputing the fact that this title was added in called the North American Championship. Like, what reason is it to call it that? They could have called it something along the lines like we have with like I can see this being a mid card title. That makes sense. Like you just said. But why is it called a North American Championship? Like, what would you call it? If I had to call it, I would have called it probably. That's a fair point. But, but with that said, if I had to give a name, I don't know. I guess an international championship. It's, we have the Intercontinental Championship for that. Well, yeah, that's true. I guess, <laughs> I guess in a sense, you know what. I take it back. I guess I guess it makes sense. <laughs> because yeah, honestly, regardless, the match it, regardless, regardless, yeah, regardless. The match itself, regardless of the match itself, I would have to agree with you. I would have I would think Rick, I think Ricochet deserves a title and uh you know the way he's getting pushed um I I I, th- I think I think Ricochet could come out the victor, but something in my gut tells me that Adam Cole is going to walk out the winner. I I I I, I don't think I think they're gonna. I, I I love Ricochet. I think the guy's a lot of charisma, but I, I feel like Adam Cole's gonna walk out with the title. I see. All right. Next up, we have the NXT Tag Team Championship: The Undisputed Era versus the Mustache Mountain. Now, this one, I'm gonna go 
personally, I'm going to go with the Mustache Mountain. Because Tyler Bate and uh, Trent Seven, they've been given, you know, like a hell of a momentum. Especially with the success that they've had in the UK division. Especially with Tyler Bate being a former UK champion. He's championship material. The guy is one hell of a fighter. And those two have proven themselves week after week, match after match, and they've proven themselves. With the momentum on their shoulders, I have no reason to deny that they will definitely get the title opportunity that they deserve. Especially Tyler Bate. He deserves to be in championship talks. So I'm going to give it to them. But of course, as you know, the Undisputed Era has four members. Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish, Adam Cole, and Roderick Strong. Now, David, I know earlier you were talking about this, so who is your pick? And keep in mind those four members of the Undisputed Era. Yeah, I, I would have to say, because um, obviously the Undisputed Era lost the titles to Mustache Mountain back in in, in, in their titles back at, um, back at Full Sail. So now you have a rematch clause invoked by the undis by uh, Mustache Mountain. And this is the third match now between these bet between these teams. So I think with this match, the fact that you mentioned Bobby Fish, I feel like he's going to return, coming off that injury, and he's going to find a way to cost the Mustache Mountain the match, and. The Undisputed Era, they're going to walk out the Tag Team Championship the, as the Tag Team Champions. But the thing with that, if Bobby Fish returns and he goes back with, with competing alongside Kyle O'Reilly, wonder what that does with Roderick Strong. Yeah, because, you know, Roderick Strong, he, in my opinion, has championship material. He can be a great championship, and I'm glad that they gave him the Tag Team Championships. But the problem that I'm having right now is this whole this whole thing with him not getting an NXT title shot. He had a shot last year with uh, Drew McIntyre and Bobby Roode. He obviously lost it, and I felt bad for him because yeah. then he was taken on to 205 Live. I don't know why the hell they put him on 205 Live, but now he finally has a tag team championship in his reign, but I feel bad for the guy because the guy deserves a lot more than what he's given. I agree. Finally, in the last matchup, my man, EC3, the man that I've always always been watching since back in the day of Impact Wrestling TNA, finally come to WWE. He's going against Velveteen Dream. So, I don't even need to explain myself. I'm just going to go out and say I am an EC3 fan, and I'm rooting for him all the way. No explanations, no questions asked. Yeah. I think with this match, I think somehow, um, I think somehow the Velveteen Dream finds a way to squeak by, um, especially since Velveteen Dream, he hasn't really had a winning record at NXT TakeOver matches, especially one-on-one -on -one matches, because he obviously has TakeOver losses against Aleister Black and Ricochet. Um, and he obviously only has one, which is against Cassius Ono in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So I think with an underrated guy like him, I think a win against EC3 would do him wonders, and I think they're going to give it to him. Alright, that's not a problem. But anyway, now it's time to finally move on to the next topic, since we finally covered NXT TakeOver, and we're still recording, which is great news for both of us, so we don't have to repeat ourselves. Whew. Next up, the main event. The biggest party of the summer, or what some are calling it, the biggest letdown of the summer, WWE SummerSlam. David, I'm going to be honest. SummerSlam is being t told to be the biggest letdown in all WWE history of SummerSlam. And the reason is because of the title cards, the matches, and also the talents that are not being showcased at one of the big four pay-per-views. With the likes of Asuka, Bobby Roode, Nia Jax, The Bar, and the Usos not being in SummerSlam, the idea of having the biggest party without the biggest names doesn't sound all that good so far. But with that said, there is a lot of things to look forward to. So, what we're going to do, I want you to tell me, how, what do you think of SummerSlam? Obviously, I'll tell my side. Then I'm going to discuss the three rumored matches that are rumored to be happening. Even though they haven't been officially announced, 
They are in the works and will most likely be kickoff matches. So, I want you to tell me, what do you think of SummerSlam so far? As of right now on paper, uh -huh. um, on paper right now, this match card, it's got a lot of repetitive matches. Um, especially like Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler. I don't understand why you're going into that match as a singles match. You have... Because those two came off of an Iron Man match, and now you're going to put them in another singles match? On Monday Night Raw, if they do not announce that there's a stipulation added to this match, then WWE is officially screwed up, because obviously no one wants to see matches repeat. At least with Kevin Owens and Braun Strowman, there's somewhat of a repeat there. I mean, obviously there's a repeat, but at least there's somewhat of a stipulation now with the Money in the Bank contract involved. And you have to come off a steel cage match. So, if you look at what we have here, there's a lot of repetitive matches here. And I think the way that they need, they could somewhat up this card, there's stipulations added to it. And as of, I honestly don't think that they're doing that correctly. Like especially with Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar, we're seeing that for a fourth time, and now we're doing, we're having another singles match between those guys. Come on. It's ridiculous. You first of all, you clearly should have had Bobby last week. David, 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 David. Let's hold yeah. off on that one because I know you and I got a lot to say about that. So let's try to keep it together because this main event. But you understand my point. I know your point, but dude, you will have all the time to talk about that one. I'm gonna leave that open just for you. But before we get off, let's kick off the first three matches that have not been announced but will be projected to be added in. First up, Bobby Lashley versus Elias. Who do you call winning? Uh, honestly, I think I think Elias wins this match. I think with the with the mojo that he's been get given. Um. Oh crap. Um. I think with the with the, with this rivalry with uh, Bobby Lashley originally coming back to beat to uh, beat up Elias. Those two have built up quite a rivalry, and honestly, with Bobby Lashley, with what he's doing, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up losing to Elias, so I'm going to call Elias on this one. I'm calling Lashley, because honestly, Bobby Lashley needs some wins in his reign since he just came back, and Elias is just thrown around as a joke. Next, I agree. Next up, the Raw Tag Team Championship. The B Team versus the Deleter of Worlds versus the Revival. Oh, okay. not, that's, supposed to, that's supposed to be a Monday Night Raw match. Well, apparently, it is set for Monday Night Raw, but it seems like one of these teams will be added in for when all said and done, maybe added in once again for SummerSlam. They, what they should do is add the Authors of Pain into the match and make it a fatal four-way match. There That's we what go. They should do. That's what they should do. But regardless, do you think the Raw Tag Team Championship will make it? Um... I don't know. Um, it's a tough. I feel like they. I feel like they will. I feel like they're going to incorporate into the match, into the card somehow. And uh, if you have one tag team def title defended, you got to have the other one. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously they didn't have it at WrestleMania 33, but you got to have that title defended. And uh, there's only about 11, 12 matches on the card, so with the four hour show like that, you're going to want to. You're going to want to put. You're going to want to put every. You're going to want to make sure. It actually all the might be five hours because apparently this card. I'm looking at it, and it's freaking long. I mean, how many matches are there, like 12? Well, let's see. These are the three rumored ones, so that's three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Oh, 15 matches? Oh, look at that. That's rumored. Right now, we only have 12. So if any of these three are added in, then it'll be 15 or, or less. Okay. But with that said, I agree. I think the Tag Team Championship should, should be added in. Because, like you said, if you have one, you gotta have the other. Next up, I can't believe this is the match we're getting. Boston Hug Connection versus the Riot Squad. Oh, nice. So I can, uh, I can, go, I can go to the bathroom during the match, I can go get food. Well, snack I guess break. it's a kickoff show. Oh, good. So now I know the match. I can go get a snack at with. Oh, Hell rah. yeah. Hoorah. Well, congratulations, WWE. You took a rivalry that we've all wanted to see and fucked it up. But hey, it's 
not the first time you fucked anything up. <laughs> I agree. So, now let's move into the actual matches that have been announced. The first kickoff show that has been announced is Andre Cien Amos and Selena Vega versus Rusev and Lana. Who do you think is going to win that one? Oh, this is predict. Oh, this is easily predictable. I think it's Andrade Cien Amos and Selena Vega. Honestly, no discussion needed. Yeah, you're you're gonna have Eden English fuck it up again, and they're gonna walk out victorious. Yep. So, same pick. Nothing to talk about. Just another snack break. Next up, Finn Balor versus Baron Corbin. Um, I don't know why this feud is somehow continuing. Even, I don't know why either. Even with it one to one, hopefully, I think I hope Balor can take it and move on to bigger and better things. Because I would like to see him be in championship contendency. He hasn't had a championship for over two years, and I feel bad what they're doing to him. They need to give him that t- universal title back. That's what they need to do. No, they need to do more than that. They need to actually push the guy. Well, that's basically what I said. It's and like, bring the Demon King back. They might do that. I mean, there's still one, one more Monday Night Raw to go. Nah, they took they took weeks when Bray Wyatt versus uh, Finn Maurer to build the Demon King. They didn't do it in just one night. They didn't really. Oh, yeah, guess so. But you never know. Next up, for the first time, not on a pre-show, a Cruiserweight Championship match. Cedric Alexander versus Drew Gulak. It finally took me 50 times before I get his name right. Drew Gulak versus Cedric Alexander for the Cruiserweight Championship. Now, what's amazing to me is 205 Live is finally getting the, the spotlight it deserves in the main card. So, yeah, I agree. For this one, I'm going to say Gulak is going to win this one because his character has transformed. He has been so incredible to watch that he should have a solid title run. And especially in Brooklyn, I think the crowd will definitely be on his side. I'm not saying anything bad about Cedric Alexander but I'm watching Drew Gulak. He's come a long way. From the ridiculousness of his 50 ways to enjoy watching wrestling, all the way to now being a kick-ass wrestler. Yeah. The one thing about, the one thing about Cedric Alexander is I was, at the, and I was at the live show at Madison Square Garden back in July, and I saw him in a... He competed in a great match against Buddy Murphy. Like, that match was actually very well done. And especially now that you have Triple H running the, st- running the show on 205 Live. Match was well done. For a house show, Cruiserweight title match, it was well done. And the guy, the kid, that, the guy that I went with, he booed the ever-living shit out of him. Like, he absolutely despises him. Damn. Which, which is why I think something interesting is going to happen in this match. Like, I think the one... Th- I, think, I think with this match... I think with this match, especially since Cedric Alexander put Neville on blast on Twitter, somehow what would make this good is if Neville comes back at SummerSlam. Oh, you got read my mind. I really hope Neville comes back. Neville is still under contract. And Technically. with rumors that he is in talks with WWE, I would love to see Neville back. Like my prediction is, I think Cedric Alexander comes out the champ because I think I think eventually with with the Twitter blasts and the, with the contract and all that, you're gonna you're gonna end up building that up again. And you know, obviously, you're gonna have now you're gonna have Neville fighting a real champion, not a paper champion, and Enzo Amore. Right? That was terrible. That was fucking. That was horrendous. awful. That was terrible. That was the that, Enzo Amore is the worst champion that I've ever seen in my life. That was the life. lowest point the cruiserweight division ever hit. I agree, but I think Cedric Alexander walks out with the belt. All right, no problem. Next up, the SmackDown Tag Team Championship. The Bludgeon Brothers versus the New Day. I'm going with my boys, the New Day, <laughs> to become nah. a six-time WWE World Tag Team Champions! Oh boy. Alright, um, I don't think so. Boo! Now just playing. Go ahead, tell me why. 
I mean, if you look, they're honestly they're pushing the Blood Edge Brothers to a new level. I think with the blood, because like you've seen this shtick with the New Day, the Blood Edge Brothers, and the Usos, there really has it. It's it's repetitive. I honestly, I think the, the, the SmackDown tag team division has it's not really entertaining to watch. Yeah, but the thing when you just said repetitive with the New Day and uh, Blood Edge Brothers, I can't really recall if they ever did that match. I mean. I mean, Pro, well, actually, they wait. Done it one-on-one. Yeah, they did it one-on-one. They're gonna, they're gonna have the Blood Edge Brothers as a dominant force until some team, some new team, whether it's Sanity or whether it's some team from NXT. I forgot all about Sanity, honestly. Yeah, so I think the Blood Edge Brothers come out with the titles. I would actually be surprised if the if Sanity actually came out and. Uh, made a disqualification just to beat the hell out of them both i wouldn't i would be surprised because honestly that would make them go from being a heel to like a face it was sanity yeah if they turn they turn face and not only beat the hell out of the like they 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 show that they're heel by beating up the new day but then they turn around and beat the hell out of the bludgeon brothers hmm. well i mean we'll see but as a, I, th- I think this match was it's kind of another snack break match Probably, but I'm always enjoying when we see the New Day. The New Day is fun to watch, so I'm definitely going to get Yeah, they had a good match with the Usos at uh, SummerSlam last yeah, year. They did, but that was on the pre-show. That shouldn't have been a pre-show match. Next up, the Money in the Bank briefcase match. Braun Strowman versus Kevin Owens. If Kevin Owens wins this match, he gets the Money in the Bank briefcase. That's if, an interesting stipulation. That is a very interesting stipulation. Whether this works out to be worked with the main event of SummerSlam is a very, very curious... Um, it's very curious. However, with that said, even though Owens does technically have a victory against Braun Strowman, I'm going to say Strowman wins. Strowman? I would have to agree. I, I think it's time that they push Braun Strowman. Honestly. Uh, and I, I think with with the money in the bank contract, you're gonna want to give him the Universal Championship. I think he deserves it. And if he doesn't cash in at SummerSlam, he could cash in anytime he wants. And the thing is, I would rather see him cash in if Brock Lesnar wins. Like have him run out, beat the shit out of him, cash in his. That would money. make Brooklyn go bonkers. They should do it that way. I wouldn't give a shit if Roman lost, but if they had a contract sign in, that would make it better. But if Roman loses and no cash in, ooh. Mm. But we'll see what happens there. But if Roman wins, now you can finally have the landscape of the Universal Championship changed. Yeah. Next up, the United States Championship match. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy is my man. Jeff this Hardy is, is Shinsuke my Nakamura favorite. wins. Damn, just like that. No explanation. I, I, no, because the thing is, though, you're building up this match. Like, you had a squash match at Extreme Rules. You... Had Shinsuke win by uh, disqualification, and uh, and then and you now, got Randy you, now you're going with the, and like I I don't you should have made this a triple threat match with uh, Randy Orton involved. They should have. So, but yeah, I'm gonna go with you on that one. I'm gonna say Nakamura, even though I love Jeff Hardy, I love him with all my heart and passion. He's my favorite wrestler to this day. But I have to give it to Shinsuke. Da yeah. now, the Intercontinental Championship. Yes, I am speaking in different tones here, my people. We've got Dolph Ziggler versus Seth Rollins. Yeah. I'm going to say straight up, if they don't fuck this match up, Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler? Yep. Yeah. I, th- I, feel like if they, I, f- I feel like they're going to add a stipulation in this match. And I think... I, I think I think they, they gotta add something to it, whether it's Drew McIntyre being locked up in a shark cage. Nah, they what? wouldn't do that because that would like Drew McIntyre. Honestly, is a beast, and honestly, we've seen many shark cages done before. Enzo Amore, uh, James Ellsworth, twice for that matter. Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho. So enough of the shark cages. Enough of that crap. Just make him away from ringside. And I would make this a ladder match. I would, I would honestly. You, got, you have to add some sort of stipulation to this match, especially coming off an Iron Man match. And with there, Seth Rollins being a high flyer, there's no way you're gonna wanna. There's no way. There's no way you can make this a singles match. True, and you know what I think might happen? <laughs> that I really hope. What? I hope that Dean Ambrose comes back as a heel. 
turns on Seth and makes Ziggler win. I really hope That'd that. That's interesting. I hope that happens. So because Dean Ambrose, we haven't seen him in so long, and if he comes back, we can get a heel turn. And I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, I would love to see him team up with the Shield and all that good stuff. But we all know Ambrose is the lunatic fringe, and that would add to his character. I agree. Next up, the match that has took nine years in the making: Daniel Bryan versus The Miz. This is probably one of the more. This is probably one of the most underrated matches that. This is going to be. That's a fact. Because you have no. Because you have these two guys. You even. You could go back to 2010 with these guys when the Miz was Daniel Bryan's pro in NXT, and then Daniel Bryan made him tap out at night at that night of Champions pay per view and won the United States Championship. And then come 2016, where Daniel Bryan was a general manager, and you had the Miz just go off on him on Talking Smack, calling him a coward. This and and also, also just like stealing his moves, his charisma, and everything. Yeah, yeah. So now you're you're building up that storyline, and now it's come to the point. Now Daniel Bryan is cleared, and when when he got cleared, I loved what Kurt Angle did on the day on the night of Superstar Shakeup when he was like. You're getting traded to SmackDown. I'm pretty sure Daniel Bryan wants something to do with what really wants you to come back to SmackDown. And I was like, wow. Damn. This is going to be good. <laughs> so I'm going to pick. I think I feel like somehow the Miz. Will, I feel like Daniel Bryan walks away. I, I want Daniel Bryan to walk away. I agree. But the only reason I can see the Miz winning is if he hits the skull crushing finality and like a, dis, a distraction or Maurice comes back. Yeah, I feel. I, I think. Honestly, I think Daniel Bryan wins this match. I, I think he, although I I, I, I would have loved to see if if Daniel Bryan was going to go back to the WWE Championship. I would have had I would have had the Miz hold the title, and then come WrestleMania 35, you could have had Daniel Bryan be the winner of that match and sort of put an end to probably one of the most brilliant stories ever, where you had Daniel, where you had two arch rivals. And you have Daniel Bryan. It's like Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa. You have, you have the you have the one the the underdog prevailing as the winner. Like that would be cool to watch, and that could possibly happen too. Like if anything, the Miz might walk out the victor, and for all you know, the Miz could end up winning the WWE title, and then they could build that matchup again to WrestleMania. Exactly. So that could be possible, but. As of, as of right now, I, th- I think maybe I think Daniel Bryan walks away with this. With this, but... I think so too. Yeah. So I'm gonna give it to Daniel. Next up, the SmackDown Women's Championship: Carmella versus Becky Lynch versus Charlotte. I'm gonna just say out front, why? Why does WWE love pushing Becky Lynch back instead of forward? She was literally in the hot seat, giving her a championship run title defense once again it should have been it should have just been one-on-one it should have been charlotte no disrespect to charlotte no disrespect at all but you've had your title shots you've had your glory you've literally earned yourself a hall of fame spot you have your resume built up for all we know we could build up to one of those it could build up to a heel turn between one of those two whether it's becky lynch or charlotte i'm thinking it's becky because becky's been on smackdown for such a long time she's a one-time women's championship she hasn't been given the opportunities so it would make sense why she would turn and truthfully speaking david i would rather have her as champion but, you know, WWE creative team, they're good at fucking up everything. So, with that said, who am I thinking to win this match? Well, I'm going to go with Charlotte. Charlotte? And the only reason, if you look at SummerSlam, she has won a title at almost every SummerSlam. Or defended well, he it. Didn't, he, didn't compete, he didn't compete. She didn't compete at SummerSlam last year. So, it's good. I think the good thing about this is... We're seeing three women who we didn't see last year at SummerSlam, so... That's good, yeah. So, with this match, it's a tough call. What I like, what I thought they were going to do is I thought they were going to add Asuka into this match, and this match becomes a Fatal 4-Way. Well, nobody knows where the hell Asuka is. Yeah, she might be injured. Probably. But, personally, um, this is actually, this is, this actually might be a very unpredictable match. It's a, it's tough to call. I think this could be one of the better matches. I think, I think somehow, um, um, man, tough call. Tough call. I think what? Tough call. 
Yeah, honestly, I'm gonna give it to Becky Lynch because you she hasn't held the title in a while, and you know, honestly, I think Charlotte's gonna take Carmella out of the equation, and I think Charlotte will get pinned by Becky Lynch, mm. and it's gonna set up a rivalry between those two. I hear you. Well, we never know. And since James Ellsworth doesn't seem to be coming back anytime soon, I mean, Thank you God. never know. I, I, hey, if he shows up, I'm going to freaking laugh. We'll next, see. next up, the Raw Women's Championship. Alexa Bliss versus my girl, Ronda Rousey. Straight oh, my up, God. Straight up, Ronda is going to fucking win. Oh, my God. So I... I am begging Ronda Rousey. I'm, I'm, I'm so tired of watching Alexa Bliss getting over pushed like that. It's ridiculous. She's literally probably the, she's probably been the woman to hold the title the most in the last couple of years, whether it's on SmackDown. But to or not Raw. actually deserve to hold it. But it's, it's ridiculous. Like you, like I, I can understand why, which is, but still, it's absolutely ridiculous what they're doing with her. Like she's over pushed. And I find it ridiculous, which is why I hope Ronda Rousey kicks her ass. Kicks I her want her to actually hurt time. this bitch. So when, and no offense, I don't mean to call a woman bitch, but honestly, she is literally the most cringeworthy thing I have ever watched on TV. With her promos against Nia Jax, to her overly hyped Mickey James segments, to being possibly one of the most cowardly heels I've ever seen. Rousey's gonna kick her ass. I hope she kicks her pink haired ass. Ooh, you went there. I'm serious. Nope. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care how hot she is. I don't care what she. I don't, I don't care. She's over. I don't care how hot she is. And whether I don't know Vince McMahon is trying to do something there, but but dude, she's over pushed. That's and Ronda fact. and Ronda Rousey's gonna kick the ever living crap out of her. Even oh. in a real fight, she would win too. Oh, absolutely. There's no denying that. Now we come to the big two. Now I'm gonna say the main event first because at the position I'm calling it, that's where this match should be. But we know Vince McMahon. We know everything about him. This match is the main event. The Universal Championship, Brock Lesnar versus Roman freaking Reigns for the fourth goddamn time in a row. Oh. David, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you a story. A couple weeks ago, I hated Roman Reigns. A couple weeks ago, I wanted Bobby Lashley. We all wanted Bobby Lashley. Yeah. Nobody listened. The executives fucked it up once again. And because of their dumb and overall stupidity, because the one thing they care about is money, they have given us the same goddamn match four times in a row. And every time we watch this match, Brock Lesnar wins. I don't give a shit about the Royal Rumble match conspiracy, my ass. Roman Reigns needs to win. And I'm going to tell you why. I am not a Roman Reigns fan. I respect the guy. That is all I'm going to say. I respect him. But I'm telling you why he needs to win. I will not boo him. I will actually cheer for him. Because first off, they managed to somehow pull off the story arc with this. They managed, just slimly, they managed to make this interesting. Making Brock Lesnar look like a heel. With Lesnar going to UFC, he will compete in UFC. Making it show he doesn't care about WWE. He doesn't care. Oh no, to show all this and to not make Roman win... That will be probably the worst, if not the last straw that WWE does. So, my money, everything, my blood, sweat, and passion is going on Roman Reigns. David, the floor is yours. I agree. I, I, this is, I think this is Roman Reigns' last shot to win the Universal Championship. And if somehow he does not win and Brock Lesnar wins... You better goddamn hope that Braun Strowman cashes in. Otherwise, 
I'm done watching WWE until Brock Lesnar gets up. And it's weird. I just ordered the... I just bought the Universal Championship belt, too. Yes, I, I it. called and texted you. I was like, brother, why are you doing this? I was like, you wasted it's, money on a period blood title. I like the belt. It's uh, Listen, it grew... I mean, I kind of agree, but it kind of grew on me, and I... And it's a pretty good looking belt. And also, like you, you, you have the you have the WWE title belt. I didn't really want to copy you. So you didn't need to copy me. It all comes down. You're a WWE fan. You get what you want. And I told you. Yeah. It said at the end of the day, you like it, you like it. But listen, yeah. what you just said, cash in. I'm either telling you right now. In. I'm, either there's the cash in, or I'm not watching WWE till Brock Lesnar. That is it. Belt. If okay, this is how I feel. Roman Wayne Reigns better win. Braun Strowman or Kevin Owens better cash in. One of those two scenarios better happen. If one of those two scenarios don't happen and Brock Lesnar wins, guarantee after SummerSlam, I am taking my WWE belt and I'm going to burn it. I'm going to record it and I'm going to post it on my channel. <laughs> if oh, man. Brock Lesnar wins. So, WWE, I don't give a shit if you're listening. I don't give a fuck. Do not make this a bullshit match. Give us a good victory. And most of all, give us, give a, us fighting a fighting give champion. Give us champion. a fighting universal champion. That is why I want Roman to win. I don't give a shit what anyone says. I hate all this the, guy just the, like yeah. you. I all hate the him. dots, all the pressure is put on Roman Reigns, and I'm and we're, I'm, I'm predicting that he walked out the champ. He better, and I'm telling you this right now, to all you Roman Reigns haters, you better not boo this. You actually should cheer for him to win. And I'm gonna, gonna tell you why. Boo Roman Reigns. I mean, listen, I understand that you know you thought that it should have been Bobby Lashley instead of Roman Reigns, but guess what? He's now in the match, okay? And him winning is much better. That having that part-timing, black luster of a champion retain that title. It's ridiculous. Exactly. So, all the pressure is now put on Roman Reigns to win that title. Because this is by far, his gonna, it's going to be his last title match. It's going to be the last shot he gets at a title. If he doesn't win, then he's done. And we are done watching WWE. Um, Brock Lesnar needs to lose. If if and I can see what happens to, at SummerSlam, I can see people walking out from the main event. I can see people booing both guys. I can literally just picture beach balls everywhere. I can even. I picture, mean, this is a championship match, so they better. They this shouldn't have been the main event. This should not have been the main event. This should have been a squash match. Have Roman come in, beat the shit out of him, win or lose. Just get the title off Lesnar as fast as you can, and then move on to the next match we're going to call that deserves to be the main event. AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. I, yeah. So, with that said, the final match of SummerSlam that should have been the main event, AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. No doubt in my mind, this is going to be one fantastic match. Unlike Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles at WrestleMania, Samoa Joe knows how to put on a show. He knows how to fight. He's a badass in real life. He's a badass at the mic. He's a badass as a champion. And he's a badass at everything he does. So Samoa Joe all the way. He deserves it. And most of all, he needs it. Because he is the real champion. AJ is awesome. I love AJ. I love that he's a champion. He's a great champion. But somewhere down the road, you got to know when your time is up and it's time to pass on. Not talking retirement, but Yeah, time no, I understand. Because AJ Styles had that title for well over 200 days. And personally, we're also going to get a much better WWE Championship match now than we did last year. And I think... I think this is going to start a great story between AJ Styles and Samoa Joe because those two honestly had their they honestly had their differences on TNA, and this is the first time they're ever going to be wrestling one on one. And that's WWE. what makes it significant. The first time we ever see them, and trust me, they will make this match one hell of a match, especially Samoa Joe. And on top of that, like you just said, TNA stars they've never versed each other. 
in the, well, this will yeah. be the first time in WWE. Exactly. So, continue, David. So, I think some. I I'm gonna have to agree with you. I think Samoa Joe walks out with the belts, and I think this is gonna start another great rivalry between AJ Styles and Samoa Joe. Lead, and it's gonna lead into the next pay per view, Hell in a Cell. So Hell I'm yes. gonna agree with you. I'm call, I'm gonna call Samoa Joe. And with that, we have predicted all two of the big shows for NXT Takeover in Brooklyn. And, of course, NXT's uh, WWE SummerSlam. So, with that said, that concludes Episode 2 of Wrestling Talk. I know we had a lot planned out, but honestly, David and I are tired of filming this back-to-back. So, I think this is going to do for now. We have our predictions. Let us know down below in the comments. Who do you think is going to walk out as SummerSlam champion? Let me know what you think of NXT. David, once again, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for putting up with all these re-recordings. And this is your final spot. You get to say what you want. The floor is yours. All right, guys. So, um... Obviously, this is going to be on my channel, too. So all my subscribers, all of Mike's subscribers. Obviously, if you guys don't know, um, this is an announcement directed towards my channel. Um, this is Mike Brasca. He is obviously one of my, probably one of the best friends I've had. And I also consider him a brother. You've seen him on my channel. We've obviously done the video with the wrestling rules of the pool. And we are trying to get a part two. And uh, whether, it's in, whether it's going to be at the pool, it might be at a trampoline park. Who knows? We're going to consider something there. But to all my subscribers out there, stay tuned for the call with Jet Central. I'm going to be doing Sunday night. I'm going to be definitely doing more live streams of the preseason games. I'm going to be at MetLife Stadium for the regular season games. And also, all the wrestling fans watching my content, I'm going to be at SummerSlam and NXT TakeOver next week. So stay tuned for those vlogs. It's going to be awesome. And I'm going to be walking around with my brand new Universal Championship belt, which I will be doing the unboxing probably in the next few days or so so guys stay tuned for mike stay tuned for awesome content to come especially with this guy you got, you guys better subscribe to mike Braska if you're into a lot of tech um if you're, into, if you're into apple or samsung or even awesome movies video games definitely sub him up he's got some awesome content there and he's all and he also does wrestling vlogs like me we obviously have similar ideas for videos but you know what we definitely work together to make our channels relevant and you know, he's definitely he's definitely a vital part to my YouTube channel, just like a lot of these YouTubers out there, like David Atlanta, Norb Cam, Pete Garrett's gun. They're all vital. I consider them all vital parts to my YouTube channel. So, and I definitely consider him a vital part too. So, Mike, thanks so much again for for doing this wrestling talk. It was a lot of fun, and you know, we're obviously going to be posting great videos at SummerSlam. Me with NXT Takeover Brooklyn Four. I hope you get to go, Mike. But, um, you know, stay tuned, guys, for big things to come. All right. And with that said, I will say this. Thank you, David. Thank you for the shout out. And guys, like I said, hit the subscribe button on his channel. You will not regret it. So thank you guys for listening. Uh, we hope you got the best out of this. I hope you guys agree with what we have to say. If you have anything you want to say, comment down below. And Mike, if you're watching this, get ready because episode three, you will finally meet David. All three of us will be in an interview. But more on that later. Thanks for listening. Have a great night, everybody. This has been Wrestling Talk, Episode 2. Tell me pretty lies. Look me in the face. Tell me that you love me, even if it's fake.